Welcome to part one of Muscle Weakness and Difficulty uh, Walking. This is mod 13, part number one. Okay, so we're going to see obviously things that have to do with muscle weakness and difficulty walking. All right, so of course the spinal cord has to be involved in that with muscle weakness and difficulty walking. So we'll, we'll look at some of the function of the spinal cord. We'll also look at some serious uh, diseases like multiple sclerosis and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Myasthenia gravis, not so, not so grave as uh, it may seem in most cases, but it certainly can get, uh, get sick, uh, serious. Stroke and Bell's palsy, we'll kind of look at those two as a pair and see what the differences and similarities are be behind the, uh, the face <clears throat> and its effects on the, on the muscles of the face. Bursitis and tendonitis, we'll throw some of that in there, more of an anatomy review, but uh, it certainly is uh, uh, relevant when we're talking about muscle weakness and difficulty walking, as is carpal tunnel syndrome, so more of the mechanical kind of stuff with these. Um, Burger's disease, we will see that and kind of compare it also with uh, peripheral vascular disease and there are some similarities between that and thrombophlebitis too. So let's go ahead and get started and look at the nervous system review. <coughs> the certain nervous system, again it's a review, so stay with me here, central nervous system or the CNS and the peripheral nervous system, the PNS, that's all you have, right? So the anatomical divisions, it's either central nervous system, which is basically the spine, and uh, the skull, of course, the head, brain, and the peripheral nervous system is everything else. So that's you know where you throw in the limbs and the legs, okay? Pretty straightforward on that. You have two different kinds of cells, or two different cell types. You have neurons, like this, and you have glial cells, as in neuroglial cells. Alrighty, what do we want to talk about about that? Um, well, not really much at the moment, other than uh, you know when you're talking about a neuron, you're usually talking about the actual less you're less talking about the cell body or the soma of the of the neuron. Usually, you're talking about the axon as it carries fibers away. But uh, we'll get into that as we need to. Certainly there's uh, talk about myelin and the myelin sheath that goes around that. I like to think about this. This is, this is something like 80% lipids. And uh, I kind of think about this myelin sheath that goes around this actual nerve as if the nerve or the axon is carrying electricity, right? And it's carrying a signal from one place to another through electricity, then I like to think about the actual myelin sheath that goes around that nerve as kind of like the the rubber coating that goes around an electrical wire. Okay, because in some ways they are a lot alike. Where they increase the speed, the myelin increases the speed of the of the nerve transmission makes it more efficient so that so that nerve signals aren't seeping out all the pla all over the place as they're trying to go down this axon okay it keeps it more efficient uh, you can go faster send a nerve signal faster that sort of things and then there's also unmyelinated nerve fibers which are gray matter so when when they're unmyelinated they are gray when they're myelinated they're white okay that's the difference between this myelin sheath right here is actually white so when you're talking about gray matter and white matter in the brain, that's usually what, well, that is usually, that is not usually, it is what it means, is whether or not it's myelinated. Okay, let's start with multiple sclerosis. Uh, I have absolutely no idea if that dude has multiple sclerosis. I can't remember his name. Montel, is that Montel Williams? I think it is. Anyway, I have no idea if he has multiple sclerosis. There is... Uh, some pretty cool videos that you should probably look at. Obviously, you can't click on it on this video, but go to the PowerPoint that is already loaded and look at that and click on it from there or copy this down. It'd be easier just to click on it from the other PowerPoint. 
<clears throat> because you're going to want to, by the way, look at all of these videos throughout this module as you should be looking at the videos throughout every module because they're really helpful. You can, I know it takes a little bit of time to click on something and, and look at it like that, but they're actually very helpful because once you see some of these things in videos, it kind of sticks in your head and it's less time you have to spend trying to figure things out and memorizing. As you see, there's a lot of things on this slide and a lot of stuff to memorize. So you don't want to memorize so much as you just want to understand it and, and figure it out. That way, uh, there's less memorizing. It's, it's knowing when it gets to that. Anyway, multiple sclerosis. What are some of the key factors here? It tends to hit pretty much in the prime of your life areas, right? In between 20 and 50 years old, these are, these are the prime of your life adult years, right? Not a good thing considering what it is is a obvious and severe uh, physical problem <clears throat> that has to do with your, your muscles. Okay, if we have never mentioned this before, sclerosis means hardening. Okay, hardening. So, what's happening here? It's it's hardening in multiple places. Okay, multiple sclerosis. Let's look at this here. Chronic demyelination of the CNS that results in scarring. Okay, so if this is your myelin that is going around your nerve, okay, so this is your, your cell body, and this is your axon going this way, and it has a myelin going around it, it's demyelination. It's, it's taking away the myelin, okay? If you take away that myelin, like I said on that other slide, you take away that myelin, now your your electricity, instead of going straight down the, the axon like it's supposed to go, it is free to seep out to go other places. Obviously that's going to do two things. It's going to make where you have less going where it's supposed to go and stimulating the correct muscle or whatever it is it's going to. That's my muscle. I know it looks like a leaf, but there you have it. It's less going that way if everything is seeping out along the lines but it's also hitting things that shouldn't be hitting and therefore causing other issues with muscle spasms and twitching and little electric shocks and all sorts of things in the way just like you know if it was electrical cable and it didn't have any wiring on it or any any rubber on it okay so chronic that means it is one of these things that is well you have it forever unfortunately a long time is chronic okay chronic demyelination chronically taking off that myelin of the central nervous system and results in scarring which is sclerosis is also uh, sclerosis is technically hardening but scarring is used almost interchangeably because the reason it's hard is because of fibrosis or another word for scarring is is fibrosis so kind of use those a little bit interchangeably because you can't really get it all hardened if it's not scarring or fibrotic too okay so a little bit of definitions there okay as far as multiple sclerosis the way it manifests itself is is four different ways okay in all cases it's getting worse okay so if you actually let me get back to that but progressive 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 and this one says actually relapsing but uh, We'll get back to that on the next slide when we look at it. So let's say, for example, remitting and relapsing. Okay, I'm sorry, remitting is not the same as relapsing. Remitting kind of goes opposite of progressive. So this is something that stops, and then you have relapses. Okay, so it gets bad, and then it stops, and then it gets bad again. Okay, but either way, it is still progressing because this is progressive okay primary progressive secondary progressive and then you have the progressive and relapsing okay as in having it again okay anyway we'll look at these don't stress too much on this slide we'll look at it at the next slide okay causes autoimmune as AI we see a lot of autoimmune diseases in this uh, course and usually unless you hear differently autoimmune means more females than males okay 
Well, autoimmune, maybe you had a prior virus infection and that uh, stimulated your immune system to go ahead and start demyelinating that axon. Okay, there's a genetic component also involved in multiple sclerosis. There is also an environmental component. Okay, this is kind of weird as far as the genetics and environment goes. They say that the farther away from the equator, as in the center line of the planet, um, north and south kind of thing, the farther away from the equator, the more cases of multiple sclerosis you see, which is kind of weird. I have absolutely no idea what that would have to do with the equator, but there you have it. Um, which also could be kind of genetic because you see some of this in a family history setting. All right, so if you see it in families, then it probably does have to do with genetic, and then there's a whole weird environment thing. Anyway, 15% of multiple sclerosis patients, multiple sclerosis patients, have a family member with MS. Okay, so clearly it's not completely genetic, but there's definitely some family link in there because that is much higher than the normal population. Obviously, you don't have 15% of of people in the population with multiple sclerosis. Anyway, if you're looking at identical twins, which is a really good way to study if something is genetic, and you see a 30% chance of getting multiple sclerosis, if one twin has it and the other twin has a 30% chance, now we're that's a really big percentage. So there is definitely something going on in a in a genetic capacity somehow. Okay. Signs and symptoms is a little bit hard to talk about exactly because it really does matter which nerves are being affected, but we can look at this, okay? So let's first look at one of the one of the criteria. You need two separate episodes at different locations to help diagnose multiple sclerosis. So it doesn't, um, you can't really diagnose it if you have, you know, a, a single episode of, uh, oh, hang on.